What's cooking guys? In this video, we're gonna do a cool glitch transition effect in Premiere Pro. Yeah, like that. Let's get into it. All right guys, so this transition is so easy to do and in the end, it comes out looking so clean. So the first thing we're gonna do to create this is we're gonna go into our panel over here, right click, new item, and you got it, adjustment layer. I always like to create my transitions and effects on adjustment layers, it's just how I roll. So I'm gonna pull that on top of my two clips I'm going to make sure I toggle on both my layers so I can jump back and forth with my up and down arrow key. And that's actually what we're going to do first. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to go left 10 frames. So I'm going to hit shift and hit the left arrow key once for five and another for 10. And then I'm just going to pull my adjustment layer there, hit the down arrow key to go to the middle again, and then 10 on the other side, shift, right arrow key, five, 10. And then just drag that to make our adjustment layer the length we want it. So now we can start actually creating this effect. To do that, we're gonna go into our effects, go into here, and I'm just gonna start typing glitch. This is going to be a VR digital glitch. I'm gonna grab that and pull it on my adjustment layer. And now we're already starting to get this kind of glitch effect right, going on right here. But I know that doesn't look good, but we're gonna adjust a lot of settings that actually make it look super clean. So go into our effects controls, and here's our VR digital glitch. The first thing I wanna do is check off this auto VR properties, and I'm gonna turn this into over and under. So it's kind of like side by side. And if you go to the actual side by side, it's kind of like up and down, I don't really get it. But I like to just do the over and under, looks a lot cleaner. And now we're gonna adjust the horizon field of view. You can see when I pull this, it's kind of stretching it. I don't want to stretch it so much where it kind of looks like it's like static from a TV. I don't really want that, I, but I want something in the middle. So I'm going to move it to probably about 150. And then I'm gonna go do the same thing to my vertical field of view. It's at 180 at the moment. Of course, if you do it all the way down, it kind of looks blocky all the way up. Then you kind of have these like gaps. I don't want that. So I'm going to do something in the middle, probably like closer to 100. And there we go. Now we're kind of starting to form our glitch a little bit more. I'm going to skip some of these other toggles and go straight down into distortion. Click that arrow down. And then we have our color distortion. We already have a little bit of color kind of working its way over here with the red and green and like the yellow a little bit. But that's at 50. I'm going to put that all the way up 100. And now you can really see it kind of just starting to change that color, make it really look like that glitch. And then I'm gonna move down to my distortion complexity. You can kind of adjust this to make it kind of like grainy almost. I don't want it to look that grainy. It was at 40. I might move it up to 50, but I don't want it so all the way up to 100 where it's like super grainy. So 50 seems pretty good to me. And you can kind of change that distortion rate to give it a little bit more static. 100% there, zero is of course nothing. 50 kind of seems good. I might put it up to 60, not too much. And then after that, we're going to skip over this transform. The transform, it just kind of changes and kind of warps all the X and Y coordinates a little bit. If you're really kind of looking for that effect for your kind of glitch, you can do that, but I am not. So I'm going to leave those all alone and skip the transform and just go right into my sub settings right here. Click that down and you have your sub influence. This kind of just increases the amount of that kind of like glitch that you're having. You still have a few there, but you don't really want that. It's kind of taking away from the glitch. So it was at 95. You can put that all at 100 and then I can adjust my sub scaling, put all the way down to give it that grain or keep it and get it boxy. I'm not going to keep that boxiness because I don't like that. I might even pull it down a little bit from 50. I'm gonna put mine at 40 and I'm gonna keep it there because I like the look of that a lot better. I kind of want my glitch and my static to actually look natural, not all boxy. So adjusting some of these points is kind of making it look more realistic. And now the next thing we're gonna touch is our noise. So I'm gonna bring noise down. And then here I have my noise strength. This is kind of adding a little bit of like grain to the background to really amplify that kind of static. But I'm kind of getting these like green dots. So I'm gonna take down the noise quality and try to get rid of some of those green dots. May I honestly don't know if I really want any of those green dots, maybe a couple. So I'm gonna put it maybe at like 25. I don't want it to look too aggressive. And then I could always just pull down the noise strength to get rid of them even more. I might up that a little bit. I might pull mine at like 40, a little bit of some dots, not too, too much. And then I keep my noise strength at 95. And then I'm going to skip over the rest of our sliders. I'm just gonna go straight to our random seed. But first, let's take a quick look of our transition effect in the middle of our two clips. Very quick, very subtle. It doesn't really work quite yet because we have still this cut in the middle that is very obvious. And also like the static's not even moving. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually adjust that random seed. 
So I'm going to go to our random scene. I'm going to make sure I'm at the beginning of our adjustment layer, hitting the up arrow key. And I'm going to create a keyframe and then go to the end of our adjustment layer, select our adjustment layer. And then I'm just going to change that random seed to just 100. And now we're going to have like this movement of like the noise and that static for this transition. And it's going to make this glitch look a lot more like a glitch like this. That's actually a lot better. Still, you can kind of see the cut and it kind of jumps a little bit at the beginning and end of the transition. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of make this glitch a little more aggressive. And I'm going to do that by holding Alt, clicking on my adjustment layer and then moving up. And as you can see that it is really turning into a glitch and now you can barely even see the image. I can Command Z. That is what it was like before. Shift Command Z. And now it looks like that now. It's adding more glitchy color and more static. And that is exactly what I'm trying to go for. And then you'll get this more aggressive looking glitch. Kind of that really like glitchy and that staticky look on like a broken TV or something. That's what we're kind of going for. But I want to make this even better. So the last thing we're going to do is I'm going to go to the end of both my adjustment layers by hitting the up arrow key. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to hit the C key to bring out my cut tool. And now every two frames, I'm going to cut the adjustment layers, both of them. So right arrow key once, twice, and I'm going to do two cuts in the middle of the adjustment layers, two more, go through both adjustment layers till the end, one, two, until we have cuts between all two adjustment layers. Last ones right there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to delete every other one. So I'm going to delete these two, these two, these two, these two, these two. And this is what the final product looks like. Oh yeah, that looks so much better. That Now we actually have an actual glitch between clips and it no longer jumps from clip to clip or beginning to end. It really gives you that glitch effect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And now the last thing I want to do is I'm actually going to go into one of my adjustment layers. It doesn't matter which one. And I can minimize this and I'm just going to right click on my VR digital glitch and I'm going to do save preset because it did take a little while to actually create this glitch to how I want it to look. So I want to just save this and I'm just going to do glitch effect so I don't have to make this again. And so I'm going to hit OK. And now for the last finishing touch, I'm going to just add a little sound effect. It's a very quick glitch, so only a quick sound effect. Something like that. And I'm just going to put this right over, I'm going to put it at the end here and then move it this way. And I'm just going to turn down the sound effect a little bit. I'm just hitting the brackets, the left and right brackets to bring it down. Or you can always just go into your audio mixer and bring it down. Negative 8 is probably good. Something like that. Just very quick and simple, just adding to that glitch effect. There we go. All right, guys, that's all I got for you for this video. An easy, simple, very cool glitch transition effect in Premiere Pro. If you like this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell. And as always, if you have something to say, you want to let me know how I'm doing in the comments or have a different transition effect you want me to do, let me know in the comments. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace.